material in dynamics. And so today I'm going to present material that will represent a review for the final exam. Now, for those of you who took the final exam uh, from other sites, if you or your proctor emailed the exam to me, I also still have your review sheet for the midterm. So if you want me to send that to you, please let me know. If you're here on campus and you took your final with me, I have your review sheet and I'll have those um, available to you this afternoon. So having said that, what, what, are we, what, is, what are we going to do in terms of the final or how does it work? So if you take a look, uh, right now we actually have four class days left before the final and we will not cover any new material in those, in those class days. So lecture 30 on um, chapter 18 is the last new material that we will cover. So now we are just going to be doing uh, material for the final exam. So we have four full days to get ready for the final. And then our final exam in this class is proctored and it's scheduled for Thursday, December 12th from 11.30 to 1.30 uh, p.m. But you can take it anytime after today. You'll need a two hour block of time. And if you are working with me as your proctor, you need to set a time. If you have a different proctor, uh, you need to work with them and then I'll communicate with your proctor directly to get you to get the time set up, the time, the place, and the logistics set up. So anyway, what I would, uh, what I would just sort of remind you of is your grade is, and this is all laid out on your syllabus, but just in case um, you have anything out and you're interested in completing any work that you have out, your, ba your grade is based on your homework assignments, and I think there are eight of them. The quizzes, which there are two of them. The midterm exam, and the final exam. So the final exam and the midterm exam are both worth 40% of your grade. So that means that there's basically no way to pass this course without doing both the midterm and the final. The two quizzes are worth a total of 10% of your grade, so each quiz is worth 5% of your grade, and the homework exams are, excuse me, the homework uh, sets are also worth 10% of your grade. So while these are lower stakes, the purpose of those homework, exam those homework assignments was to prepare you for the quizzes and the homeworks and quizzes together prepared you for the midterm and the final. And I would just let you know that what I see very consistently, someday I, I'm sure every teacher knows this, I'm sure most students know this, but um, students who come to lecture or watch lectures online do much, much better than students who don't. And so, and I have a record of that. Now, obviously, and I'm talking to the students who are here, it would be silly for you to come to lecture and then watch them online unless there was something particular that was of interest to you. Um, but I do have students in cyber world who don't watch the lectures consistently and their grades reflect it. So people who, uh, who watch the lectures uh, do better on their homework, people who do all of their homework do better on the quizzes and people who do the quizzes do better on the exams. So what I'm encouraging you to do is uh, to make sure that you've got those pieces of, uh, of your scaffolding built so that you're ready for the final. So if you've done the homeworks and taken the quizzes, that means that you are ready to take the final and I have the greatest of confidence that you will do well. So um, I try to make everything work together. The homework are not like separate from the final. Hopefully everything is working together. All right, so the next part is, is that uh, even though I, I cannot say really that this is cumulative. In other words, uh, it covers chapters 15, 16, 17, and 18, 
although uh, 15, 16, and 17, which is rigid body dynamics, is built pretty heavily on the first part. So if you did well on the midterm, um, I also think that you are, you've laid the foundation for yourself to do well on the final, although the material from chapters 11 through 14 will not be included explicitly on the final exam. So the final exam is proctored. It's going to look just like the mid, I mean, it's going, I don't mean just like the midterm, but the structure is going to be the same as the midterm. It's going to be proctored. There are going to be four problems, uh, one from each chapter. They are equally weighted. So if a problem is easy, more easy, or more difficult than the other problems, it's still worth 25% of your exam. Everything is hand graded and graded for partial credit. So even if you get the wrong answer, the chances are if you've done the work correctly uh, and you have thought through the problem logically, the chances are that you will be able to still get a very good grade. So if you miss a piece of data or you do a conversion improperly, uh, it's not going to blow you out of the water in any way because everything that I grade, I think of as being an essay problem. I, I really want to see your, your thought process. Uh, I really want to see that more than I want to see um, how you get, you know, the, the actual nature of your final answer. So when we talk at what kind of practice problems we're going to have, oh, I need to include also, you do get a study sheet. And once again, that is a regular size piece of paper, eight and a half by 11, in your own handwriting. And uh, once again, I will keep those study sheets and when everybody's taken the exam, if you want your study sheet back, just let me know, send me an email or stop by my office, uh, probably would be next semester, but um, I'll be happy to give that back to you for your records. All right, so chapter 15 problem, chapter 16 problem, chapter 17 problem, and chapter 18 problem. When I take a look at these problems, I try to find uh, what I consider to be classical problems. And so when we look at chapter 15, I, I don't know, I'm getting stuck on chapter 16 right now. There's a lot of really good, I think chapter 16 is probably my favorite chapter in this part of the course. But in chapter 15, we start talking about the kinematics of rigid bodies. And basically, we begin that work of splitting up motion into rotation and translation. And it requires that we use vectors in a very rigorous way. But since we're pretty much talking about plane motion, we do have a little bit of simplification in that uh, we know that our rotations are all going to be essentially z direction and the rest of our motion is going to be x, y motion if we consider z to be perpendicular uh, to the page. So we covered sections uh, 15.1 through 15.4. And we did a little bit of 15.5, which is analyzing motion with respect to a rotating frame. So I'd like to leave that for discussion in one of the later chapters. And so what I really would like to do for chapter 15 is to present a type of a constrained motion problem. And when I look at, I like a couple of different kinds of problems, but I really like like a crankshaft with an arm. So let's do 15.120 as an example problem. So what I'm trying to get at there is doing some sort of a constraint motion, some sort of an angular, um, and some sort of a translational piece. 
And I like that problem also because since the piston movement is constrained, uh, you can use some visual skills to help you solve that as well. All right. So then moving on to chapter 16, where we start to talk about uh, forces and accelerations or kinetics. Um, we have a situation where we want to look at both acceleration and velocity. And I really don't want to go for another constrained motion problem here, but I may end up doing that also. So in chapter 16, we talk about those equipollent systems of forces equal, external forces, summation equal to mass times the acceleration of the mass center vectorally, and summation of um, moments being equal to, <laughs> pardon me, to the rate of change of angular momentum, and that that in itself is equal to I bar alpha. Uh, so really something here, something that rolls, or something that pivots is a good type of a problem. And if you build in some constraints, sometimes you can get a little bit more bang for your buck, but I do, I'm going to stick with the disc on this one. So, if I look at number 116, we have a four pound bar, let me see if I like this one. Okay, I'm going to put it up on the screen so you can see it. I'm considering this problem as a sample. Um, we have a four pound bar attached to a 10 pound uniform cylinder by a square pin. It's off-centered, so we know some of the geometry and we know something of the uh, angular velocity, determine the reaction at P at this instant. So we're, that's pretty cool. We're, we're going from a kinematic to a kinetic kind of a thing. We've got an off-center, so we have to find a moment of inertia. Let's do that one, 116, okay? So, and we have something that's uh, a piston, and then we have, so we have constrained motion, and then we also have a rolling disc. All right, chapter 17, we talk about uh, the plane motion of rigid bodies, but we concentrate on energy uh, and momentum in this. So we get back, when we talk about energy, we kind of get out of the, uh, we get away from the rigid vector math. 17.3, we talk about eccentric impacts. And I'm not, mm, I don't know. I'm trying to decide here. Eccentric impacts are interesting. If you have a plate that gets hit by a bullet and it rotates on a hinge or something similar to that, it's not a bad type of a problem. So if we look at problem 17.101, let me just see if I like this as much as I think. Guys, we have a, vec we have a bullet coming in at a, at a non-square vector, square panel on a pivot, determine the velocity of the panel immediately after the bullet becomes embedded and the impulsive reaction today. Yep, that's our problem, 17101. Okay. Okay. And then last but not least is chapter 18. And in chapter 18, we really got in and got out pretty quickly on this. I mean, not time-wise, but th there's just a lot of rabbit holes that you can chase down when you start working with scenarios that are this complicated. So my goal for chapter 18 is to pick a problem that will show us a little bit uh, more about the energy and momentum uh, of a rigid body or the motion of a rigid body in three dimensions without 
going too much down the rabbit hole of the math. Now, I personally love math, and I know you all do as well, but it's like I don't want this to turn into a math test problem. I want this to be an engineering problem. So let's talk about something with a somewhat simpler geometry and a fixed axis of rotation. There we go. Let's take a look. Um, at 1866. We have a thin homogeneous triangular plate, weighs 10 pounds, welded to a light vertical axis with bearings. Knowing that the plate rotates, determine the dynamic reactions at A and B. I think that's a good little problem. It's going to get a lot of, you know, get a lot of uh, geometry and a lot of engineering analysis for a not small amount of math, but at least a moderate amount of math. All right, so these are the problems if you work these, and as before on the midterm, if you work these problems out, if you want to put them on your study sheet, you are more than welcome to, or some version of those. Um, and if you work those four problems and have your homework done and your quizzes done, I think you will be very well prepared to do a very good job on the final exam. All right? So do you guys have any questions for me yet? Got to get into it first, right? <laughs> okay. So, um, so just to go back to the schedule, uh, I'm going to be around. My plan is to just live at my office for a while. So uh, anytime that you need to come see me, you are more than welcome to uh, if, you ha if you need help. And um, having said that, okay, there we go. I was just looking. I have a, I'm going to Matizzi for a school-sponsored uh, event on, m on Friday morning. But aside from that, I, I don't have any plans to be off campus at all. So if you need to visit or if I can help you with anything, um, I, I hope that you will come see me. Uh, if, if your schedule is busy as I'm sure it is, if you set an appointment with me, I'll just make sure to allocate time uh, for you and we'll, we'll go from there and we'll get it all taken care of. So, all right. Well, thank you and best of luck. Uh, I will not present formal lectures on Wednesday or Friday or Monday, but if you wish to come and discuss problems, I'll let I'll be, it could be a student-centered, a student-led discussion, and we can cover, we can work problems, we can talk about any any uh, ambiguities that you have that we can clear up, and uh, it's also a good time. Not the people in here so much, but some people who are behind in some of their work that you can get take this time to get caught up and get everything turned in and uh, work with me if I can help. So you guys have a great day today. And that's it.